Hello and welcome back. Um, I'm going to break this video down into two stages uh, purely because it's going to be looking at two different things. I'm going to be looking at my setup that I use to fly. Um, most people have a similar one. Mine's still quite basic. Um, I've seen some crazy, crazy cockpits out there that people use for exp explain. So uh, but it depends how, how serious you take it. Um, so the first part is going to be just basically about the SciTech parts and about the stuff I'm using and the issues I've had and still have, funny enough. Um, before, if you, know, if you decide you're going to go into flight and do this, uh, yeah, um, you need someone to tell you where, where things are not quite working properly. Um, Explain 12 itself has improved. It doesn't crash as much. It's still a... It can still be finicky if you play around with it too much. That's why I've had to do this again because of um, um, if you start messing around too much, it doesn't like it. Um, it's not designed to be messed around with. It's designed to you load it in, you fly, um, end of. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll flip my other camera on because the other thing is I was hoping to have a camera set up so that I had a field of view of, of what I'm doing, but I can't do that. Um, and the reason I've had to do it this way is so that I can see where that camera's facing. You know, it, normally I'm using both screens. If I, uh, I can't spin that one around because I haven't turned it on yet. So I'll turn the other camera on. Uh, activate it. Okay. So now I've, I've got the two cameras working. So camera two, as you can see, I'm all set up. I have two two monitors, and I use both monitors for flying. Um, you put your stuff on there, but because I'm using this for my recording. I can't see this if I've got the other page up, so I've decided to do it in a different way. Two sections. I'll do this first, and then I'll put it back. Because the other thing you also find with Explain is when you start messing around with settings, um, like the two with my, uh, double monitor situation, when you flip from one to the other, it gets into a right mess. So I thought, you know what, I'll turn that off to start with and I'll do this and then I'll go back into my do we will do a flight today um, I've made a few different settings as well I've, I've been a bit lazy and just kept with bits and bobs and but now I've, I've made those changes and actually uh, my landing my last landing was absolutely fantastic uh, the last few have been I did make a uh, try to make a video but one of the crazies that it does when you start messing around with it is ATC gets all out of kilter and it was trying to land me at an airport that didn't exist strange but um, these things do happen in it. There are quirks. It's still quite new. It's still not long out of beta. Um, so <clears throat> you can see on screen, I've just got just a standard um, plane there at the moment. And it's just to show um, some, of the, some of the quirks with SciTech as well as this. When I um, bought my yoke, this is my system. So I've got a yoke system down here. When I bought the yoke, I just bought the yoke. I didn't have this bit. And this is plug and play, 100%. You just plug it in, uh, explain 12, picks it up straight away. You're away. You, you, you've just got to assign all your all your buttons here to to what you want to do. Um, it's quite up here uh, on the uh, explain for a minute because I've actually got it on pause at the moment because there's a lot of chatter going on. Um, so I bought this first and I thought, yeah, getting used to it. Blah blah blah. I don't have rudders. I have a set of steering wheel pedals down there, but I don't have rudders. Um, so I've been working with it for a while. The landings are great. I thought, you know what, I need just need to improve a few bits. I don't want to be keep pressing over onto my um, onto my plane to um, to keep touching stuff, and um, especially with autopilot being so far away, and then it just throws you out. So I thought, I wonder if I could do ah, a multi-panel. That sounds good. So lo and behold, I went and bought a nice little multi-panel. As you can see, it says altitude. Now this is a bit I can't get it right. So this is altitude and vertical speed then you've just got your vertical speed so you'll change your your dials here to to change your vertical speed as you see there and then you've obviously got your plane speed which <laughs> 100 yeah uh, yeah which is set up like that and you can see it's changing but you can also see it's changing if you look at the screen uh, as I as I do this you'll see it changing on the screen um, let me just put the point of this in there which one you're looking at so that one there and so that's just moving around and I got a visit by the dog so he's no he's unimpressed he's gone 
So um, yeah, so you got that. You've got a heading which is <coughs> an absolute must. Um, as you can see, the headings will change up there as well. So that's an absolute must. It's, it's a lifesaver. I do a lot more IFR flying than I do FMC, which is down here. I don't tend to use the FMC that much. I do it by air traffic control, and it gets me where I want to get um, within reason, and I can get down. Uh, I do like to manually fly the thing in, which uh, is why I needed a pilot. So that's the flight panel. Problem with the flight panel is you can see I've got that down there. You can see this all nicely lit up and running beautifully. Day one, <laughs> day one. I'd never want to go through day one ever again. Day one, you put it on and you're like, hang on a minute, I've got the back screen coming on, but nothing else. Okay, so what have I done? So it's sold to you as plug and play. I can tell you now, it's definitely not plug and play. Now it's one fuel for sure fire thing because it's not plug and play nowhere near so it took me five hours to get that screen looking like that in my first day and I was got to the point that I was like right I'm giving up I'm gonna put it back in the box and I'm gonna send it back I can't work with this um, but I did keep it overnight I just think thought overnight for I'll, right, I'll Google some stuff went and Googled found out I needed different drivers because you re, when you go and get your SciTech drivers for this for the uh, panel <laughs> They cause more issues than that they actually improve, but you do need them. Uh, there, there is like um, a little test panel just to make sure it's all operating fine. The other thing is on the yoke, you have four USBs at the back. You cannot plug this into there. There's not enough power, so you have to go as I've got set up down here a USB converter hub because I've only got one on my PC. So I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to get one of those, which I'm gladly did. I've got <coughs> camera, um, yoke, and that's all plugged in there for now. Um, all for all, doesn't work. This is the other problem. Now, I've got all, all the drivers in. I've got it looking like this, but there are issues. The laminar version plane and a Zebo, which I tend to use all the time, are different. So... I had to go and find drivers for the Zebo, which I found to a point, and then I've messed around a few times looking for new drivers, messed it all up, had to come back to start again. So I'm back to where I was, and it works for me because you have to compromise a little bit with these things. Costs a fortune, these things, but they're a pain to put right. Uh, this actually bolts down onto your yoke. So the SciTech yoke itself is absolutely fantastic. It, it's brilliant. You've got so many keys, and it, there's no problems with that. When it comes to these peripherals, just be aware if you do end up going and buying stuff like this, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, so I've got it running to, to find. So this is a laminar plane. So I think if you push these buttons, they should light up. Oh, yeah, there you go. So your autopilot down here is lit up, and these should all light up, I think. Yeah. Okay, so these all light up. All good and well. They'll flash and what have you. That's great. All good and well. The only problem I find with this is that for some reason it has a quirk and I end up crashing. I don't know what it is. It's something in that driver that does it. Um, doesn't seem to operate correctly. But that's basically how it's supposed to work. So that's great. Now in the Zebo mod, if you get the Zebo, which everybody tends to get because it's such a it's a great freeware uh, airplane that has all the internal sounds and everything else and people talking and make more immersion. Uh, there's a better plane to fly to be honest. All this doesn't light up. The rest of it works apart from this and autopilot. So that's why I've had to go off and set my autopilot up onto my quadrant down here. This comes part of the yoke by the way. And, and we've got switches down here. So these switches are, I think that's brake. Note that's AP off, brake and autopilot command. So you can turn it on, turn it off from there. Uh, I forget what these ones were because so many of them. These are obviously your, your throttle. Um, this is my speed brake and this is your mixture which for the airline is you don't need to touch it's really these two we're going to work with um, as you can see it's still doing little bits and bobs whatever it's doing something just fell off I don't know what it was um, so that's all basically about the, the flight pattern that's why I wanted people to see how I fly this thing um, I used to use uh, just a normal stick and I just could not get on with it. it. It was a case of like, oh, I can't play this X-Plane. I've wasted my money. But then I went and bought one of these. And 
it's, these are surprisingly not that expensive if you buy just a standard Cytec Pro or Logitech, which it, which it is really. Uh, if you buy one of these, they're about 140 quid. I, I've got picked, I got picked this up for about 129. Um, so that was that one. This thing here I got in the sale. I wouldn't pay the 100 quid they wanted. I, I paid 80 quid, I think. Uh, no, 71 pound. Just right. Yeah. So I got that quite good deal. So. I uh, won't be buying anymore. I know that for the, I'm going to go through that hassle again. It, it's enough to put you off because uh, you can have a radio one. You can have all these different dials and stuff, and you're thinking, oh, it's just taking me hours to do the first one. Does it flash away nicely? As soon as I actually move over to the Zebo mod, all this will turn off, but the thing will stay. Don't worry if you come out the program and it all goes completely blank. It's what it does. So because it's not being used, it knows. So basically, that's that is basically my setup to what I'm using. Um, and the whole reason of this having this like this was purely to to make sure <laughs> you got to see what I'm using. I may use I might leave this top one turned on, the top camera turned on, so you can see me flying it around and the hands moving. It's but this one here, I can't keep this still. I could actually put it into a position, but oh, what's that position like? Possibly okay. Um, let me get that out of the way because I've got a crosshair on there. Right, yeah, so that, uh, maybe that'll be okay as well. So you can see from two angles. I uh, just don't want to take too much away from um, what we're doing. So what I might do now is just take you through, because I've got a loading Zebo mod anyway, so we could go back here. Go, and This is basically where I'd go. So. Zebo mod doesn't load in straight away. That's the problem I have. It's some of the updates have made it impossible for it to, to load in. So you have to load in this plane first. And if you have those open, you cannot move your head anywhere. Um, so yeah, this is just the standard plane that's got naff all in it, to be quite honest. I don't even think I've got, I'm not even at a jetway. Uh, and I, what I can do, I can show you how I, we, I would go through setting up. Um, before we fly off, because I'm actually going to have to. Can I get that? I don't know if I can do that from here. But I'll have to have a look. Right. So we'll basically go to flight configuration. In here is all your planes. So this one here is a freeware plane that I could not get to work for love the money. So it's there, but it's. I'm still waiting to see if I get, how can I how can I unlock the FMC. I don't use the FMC, but you need it unlocked to fly the plane. So couldn't do it. Uh, dash 400. That's another plane I've downloaded. I'm not that impressed with it. You've got my, these are laminar on some of these. Um, you've got the 4K laminar. I haven't tried that one yet, but I'm, I've been using just the standard NG. Uh, and you can go further down. You've got all your lighter planes if you want to fly lighter planes. I think it even goes to a glider if you want to do a glider. Helicopters. Not tried a helicopter yet. It, would, it might be fun. I think you've got the Phantom. You used to have a space shuttle on here. I don't even got that on there anymore. And you've got these like aero light ones as well. and you, so There's plenty in there to do. Plenty to look at. You, like I say, you can either go and have a look for freeware planes, which is xplane.org, or you can purchase other planes, which is a risk. I mean, the A330-300 here, I can't get this off the ground for love and the money. I just do not know how to fly this plane. Um, I've tried so many times, I've got on so annoyed with it, I've stopped messing around with it for now. Uh, I can get it down the end of the runway and just keep it going. Um, I've got to look up a manual, have a good read, and then try it out again. Uh, I do have Microsoft um, Flight Simulator as, as, Simulator as well, but out of the two, I have to say, I do like X Plane better. It's a preference of choices. I just find that the camera angles and everything else is absolutely great. What I do like in Microsoft Simulator is the ground crew. They come up, they're moving, they're kicking things, they're doing stuff. But I just find this a little bit more realistic. Um, I do like Microsoft's photo real um, scenery, which x you don't have. <laughs> I've just been looking at also and was going through that and I just could not get a part of it to to work so I've just canned it for now I thought well rather than mess up my game uh, <coughs> I'll not bother it looks like where we are at is Manchester Airport at the moment because I think that's where I flew into last time um, I'm gonna when I come I'm gonna like drop off from this and then we'll set up for a real flight 
I'll, I'll set up a flight. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. I don't really want to go back to Paris because that will be basically like watching the other videos. So I, I might do a, a Dublin to Glasgow or Dublin to Manchester, a, a Dublin to London. I don't know yet. London, Norwich could do. Um, Glasgow to Norwich. Well, yeah, you fly in real time. So if it's an hour flight, it's an hour flight. If it's two hours flight, it's a two hour flight. So uh, I think at this plane you can get up to about three or four hours. But um, yeah, you don't want to be sat there watching a, a, a sim like that for that amount of time. So I do like tend to do shorter ones. So I'll pick out something anyway, and, and we'll go from there. Um, so that's basically what I was going to show you in here. And once you're in here, you, there, there are other things you can do. Like because uh, we're going to choose that one, I can go pick any place. You can type in either airport, just type or type in like Manchester or Cambridge or whatever you want to type in there. Uh, you can go in there and customize, and as you can see, if you go through, these are all the different ones I've got. Uh, uh, default, I didn't ask for default. It's got Air France, um, which I've used before, but some of these do change the kind, kind of slightly part of the plane you want. So I haven't used smart wings yet and stuff like that. Um, so I haven't used that kind of stuff yet. Um, I've got Virgin, which is what I'm using at the moment. Um, although I'm using the Ryanair, Ryanair Captain because we don't have one, they've got Skymatics as a Zebo delivery, so that's actually the Zebo itself delivery, which is quite nice. They have WestJet and all that, but we'll go, we'll go Virgin. So, and all we've got to do now, I've got to load this back in. It might take a little while, um, but it's part of this X Plane experience. Is um, it can take anything up to about five to seven minutes to load this game up from start. Once you've loaded it up once, it normally is quite quick. So you can set your weathers down here. You can set the day of time, date of time, and that. So uh, I'll go back to there, something like that. Uh, you can set what part of the year it is. I think so. You can customize it. Um, say in January, but let's just take it out. January. It's not January anymore. So um, let's get into up to date. I'll be in April. Yeah, April second. I think. If we can do that. You can put the hours. GMT offsets, blah 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 blah. Track real real world date and time. Uh, that's okay, but for this for the pro process of a demo, I don't really want to put in proper thing here because you can't choose what you want to do. Then uh, once you set up your real weather and that, um, you can't really do much with it. So okay, so we'll just go start. Then you go. Oh, hang on, I'll do that. Cancel. What you can do, you can change your location if you wanted to. So, um, I'm actually go from UGKK, London Gatwick. We'll do London Gatwick. If you double click on that, you go into your airport. So you can choose where, what stand, where you want to be re relevant to there. So 133 looks good to me. And then just confirm it. Oh, why has it chosen mine here? Um, quite know why it's done that. So discard those changes from it. Discard. So let's try that again. Yep. Sometimes um things don't go so well. Right. Let's try that. So that's where I should be. London Gatwick. Make sure I'm still on free free yet. And it's remembered it. So and then we can go start new flight. Start new flight. So you'll be presented with this screen, of course. Um, I still do get to use this keyboard behind you, by the way. <coughs> oh, that was more difficult behind it. I have moved most things to the quadrant. Um, I don't know if I can get that any better than what I've got it. I tried to put it over here the other day, but ah, it's staying today. It might stay. We'll see. But, um, I might catch my leg on it. That's the only problem I think we've got here. But um, yeah, so this is the first part of the video I'm going to break off soon and, and look at another part but like I said this takes a while to uh, download in um, there we go that's nearly done now so it will read the sceneries files and look at what it, where you are because I've, I've changed airport it will take a little bit longer if you was at the same airport it would probably have been three quarters there now <coughs> have to excuse me I've got a bit of a cough going on I think someone's giving me a bit of their cold Again, I'm thinking of loads of them this year. Um, what else is there? 
so while this is loading in yep this is all set to go i do love it you have to calibrate this um there is a calibration software in x-plane but there's also one outside that you can do uh which is advisable when you get it because it, it pulls the talk to the right the only reason i know that is because i've had to reinstall x-plane 12 when i messed up a few things and <laughs> i haven't done it yet so it does fall to the right so when i take off you'll see it dip slightly so and sometimes it pulls that way anyway uh, it's, it's annoying but i thought you know I'll, I'll get that done i couldn't remember how to do it so i've got to go and google it again to make sure i can do it and we'll youtube it this is the worst part of the whole thing is um waiting for things to load in but once we're in i'll, I'll probably going to leave it as it is but i do need to because i'm not going to see those cameras there we go right xp realistic yes um this was a trial very good uh new noises aircraft noises ground around your noises head shaking and all that they want 30 odd quid for that and i'm not paying that for it it was good though but i didn't think it was worth that so um so i left it at that um so we what we'll do i'll bring this to an end um so you've seen the system i'm using i did i wanted to explain to you that this just is done with a d-pad you can't you can do it with a d-pad but i wouldn't want to try it that's for sure because you wouldn't have such a great but when you buy a yoke you buy bits pieces it just makes the whole experience a bit better i do tend to play explain more than i play anything else i've got hundreds of games but this is one uh, ets i've not played that for over a month now but i do need to get back into that at some point uh formula one i've done because I've, I've got game pass so i'm downloading games trying them out that's why i wanted to try microsoft flight simulator to see if it worked well but pfft, yeah i'm not so sure i'm glad i did that for free rather than spending 80 quid buying a simulator that i'm not going to enjoy okay so i will pop back in a very few minutes and what we will do i'll have this set up well for me it's a few minutes for you it'll be no time at all uh, and i'll get this set up and the flight ready and i'll probably leave these cameras like they are quite i think that's best i've had them so it's a shame i couldn't get it behind me on a pod but we'll see okay see you in a few seconds okay well welcome back um that's a short break for you i've found the code i needed so um what we'll do is, um, i'm on pause at the moment so it's going to get a bit noisier uh, i'm in the zebo mob i just checked the best way to check is to check by that you got avitab here avitab is obviously uh, another plugin you've got your plugins up here uh, so you can see you've got Cytec panels, AviTab here, and you can toggle the tablet, you can do what you want with it. But in the Zebo mod, it's, it's set here as it would be in normal real life. Uh, X camera is the camera I use for all my different um, XPGs, you could say, uh, different angles. So we'll look into that one. You can actually get the toggle bar, you can drag that across there. It's not registered, you don't need to. Um, it's freeware. And you can just set it up to you can you can hear that cockpit passenger view the outside shots you can these are all the cameras I've got set up so you can actually go through them down here <coughs> on here to uh, look at what you got um, I've got one for the undercarriage as well which is always handy when you're flying um, this one's nice for when you're up in the air and you just take it off as you'll see I tend to have a certain way of doing stuff uh, you've got passenger views as well so you can change all your passenger views and so on so you've got the ones the cockpit one is very important this one here is very important the first one because you want to be in this position when you're doing stuff uh what you tend to find is you like this over here over there uh, and it take off you really want to be as straight as you can so that's just basically that um we'll get um the flight plan sorted out in a minute i just want to check yeah that does come up okay so i'll just drag it to my other screen on the other screen now i've got the full map up there with all the the, the um bits and bobs going on so um what we will do is we'll get going so we're going to go from gatwick to dublin which would be probably a, a good enough flight um so we'll we'll start the unit up and get it going and to see how we get on this should be fun
you can start the plane from cold and dark if you want. It takes a little bit of while. You've got checklists you can do. Uh, Hear that? That's annoying when you twist these and it does that. That like does get bit annoying. So we are waiting for ground services. Um, not sure what fuel I got. I've got plenty in there to get us there. Just trying to think if there's anything else I haven't switched on that should be switched on. And what we'll first do is we'll welcome people aboard. and gentlemen from the flight deck this is your captain speaking on behalf of all the crew welcome aboard this flight we expect to be departing on schedule today and weather on route is looking pretty smooth shortly the cabin crew will be showing you a safety demonstration this is for your safety and for those around you so please give them your full attention once again you're all very welcome on board so that's the announcement captain announcement made um we've got quite a little bit of setting up to do so before we can take off you can see it's pretty rough out there um, just kill that for a minute. The other thing you can do is we can go in there, cabin light, and when you take off, you can put it all to take off and landing and all that stuff. Nine times out of ten, I forget. Obviously, you got your map, so it will show you where you are if it ever wants to work. Uh, always handy to have that map at some stage. Down things. Right. Um da -da 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 -da. Oh, let's set these up. We're going E G K K to E I D W. We're not gonna go as high as thirty thousand. Probably gonna do twenty five max. So this is for your oxygen, so it keeps everything pretty much stabilised in the cabin and in the uh, in the passenger area. Next ground services are just starting to come in. What's kept you? So what we can do while we're waiting for them is we now know we're going to go to 25,000. So we can flick this to altitude. And as you can see, I haven't got to go to the mouse at all. I can just use my flight panel. Takes a while to get there, but we'll get there. That's the reason. And then we want to go to speed, max speed. Go around about 230 is good. If you go, that you'll start seeing a little you coming up. There you go. You can see that one coming up. Once you set your flaps down to five, two thirty is about where you want to be. So we ain't got to worry about heading until we get out. 
Um, that now works on my buttons when I figure out which one it was again. Um, always fun when you take off. Won't need to put these on just yet until we start moving. So we've got ground services going on right now. Welcome to Gatwick. So the next thing we were going to do is we're going to have to set ourselves a flight plan. You can use FMC, type it all in, put in your detail, well go off and get sim brief or Navigraph, go and get all your stuff in there, but you pay for that. Uh, let's do a subscription. Or you can do it this way, and that's fly through ATC. So let's call ourselves, I don't know, 1950. And then we're going to fly into EIDW. If that is wrong, you'll get an error message come up, which it is correct. Uh, 25,000. Ooh, that's got Let's do here. Over too high. Two, three. Now you have a choice to go by airways, which is quite a long way round it. It'll take you and in sections and you'll move around, or you can go direct, which is now fix. So we'll do that. And then that's your flight flight plan set. What you can do, you can either do a radio check, see if I don't don't tend to do it anymore, I just go for a, the clearance. London Gatwick, delivery, Virgin 1950, request IFR clearance to Dublin. Virgin 1950, clear to Dublin, routing as filed. Maintain flight level 250, squawk 3305. Cleared IFR to Dublin, route as filed. Maintain flight level 250, squawk 3305. Virgin 1950. Very important you get the squawk right. And that's going to be the only time we need to to change that. So um, now we've got all that uh, altitude and thing else, so I can just nip to head in. Um, so we've been waiting for these guys for a bit. We've done our welcome. We are all set, really. It's just now waiting on the ground services. You can actually stop those ground services anytime you want to. Um, the other things you can do in Avitab, you go in here, you can actually oh, payload. You can actually put in, if you want to, passengers. So it has no relation on to what you see in the in the but you, you can have them in here. I tend not to bother. There is a checklist you can follow if you want to do preliminaries and just click them all down as you go along. And you do get arrows that point to everything, I think. Now that gets in the way half the time, so you have to keep moving that around the screen. So, you go... Just to give you arrows. There you go. So it's telling you what to look for. So... And you can just on bus, and it'll just click through and just go through. And move. IRS mode selector. Is it back is on? Yep. Make sure they're all set. So you can just do all that. Oh, I tend not to bother now, this. If you want to make it feel like while you're waiting, make it feel a bit more immersive, a bit more realistic, then you can do that. But for because I want to get up in the air and get the video moving on and get you know so we're not stuck around too long because when we come into the landing part that can take 20 minutes so if you're flying an hour it's an hour and 20 and as I said before when you fly this for real you're flying for real you're doing the real mileage there's no one in ten scale or anything like that um, Put it on air for a minute. That will change as we go up, but we picked a lovely day for flying. Should have moved over a few more. Look, we've got jetway over there, but we know how jetways work. 
So, let's have a look south how they're getting on with this groundwork. I won't find out again from there. Now the baggage handlers are just appearing. While you're out here, what we can do, you can also go into free camera, and then you can whip up and have a look around the airport. And the You can move along to the tail and stuff like that. I can never move it, move it forward. I was actually looking for the buttons to move it forward. I'll have to um, Google that too. Right. But there you go, you've got all your different guys that you turn to have a car like that guys. Yeah. And then back into the quietness of the cockpit. While these guys get themselves sorted. If you wait the entire time, I think a limousine turns up on the last bit and must be a celebrity or something getting on. I seem to have them on every flight if I wait, but I don't tend to wait. Uh, not a lot of noise going on, not a lot of chatter going on at the moment, so which is good because that means we might be able to get away early. The other thing to find out. London Gatwick, Virgin 1950, request Q&H. Virgin 1950, oh, can't see it. Q and H one zero zero eight. London Gatwick, Q&H 1008, Virgin It's normally here, but... Because we've got a shadow or glare on there, we can't see it. So we'll do that in a little while. It's going to be 10.13, so uh, yeah, it's definitely changed. Right, well, I've got a board waiting for them. So we can pull them away. So what we can ask for is taxi. London Gatwick, Virgin 1950, request taxi for departure. Virgin 1950, runway 08, taxi via Lever, Romeo, Julian, Golf. Julian, Julian, Julian 6, Julian 2, Julian and Julian 1, hold short of runway 08, runway 08, right taxi by Lima, Romeo, Juliet, Golf, Juliet, Juliet 5, Juliet 6, Juliet 2, Juliet and Juliet 1, hold short of runway 08, right, Virgin 1950. Right, the thing with the Zebo mod is when you get pushed back, you're actually going to have to push yourself back in the sense of steering because on the laminar versions, it will steer you. On this one, I noticed it doesn't steer you. Bit of a shock on the first day, but. Um, we would try it. Can take a while for this to turn up. This is our man coming now. Yeah, it's looking like our man. 
And all we're going to do, we're going to pull to the side so we can see, see something. Else. And then we Which way? So, what takes one? That's the outside. Right. The Virgin Atlantic um, livery I actually downloaded as a free race. And if you want to change it angle, you can look at it. Yes. 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 So we get back in the cockpit while we're waiting for Matey Boy to move out of the way. We can put all the lights on. One important thing I didn't do was the trim. Then you just go and double check your flaps at a five. You set this on when you when you've taken off. Ah, now we can do the Q and H. London Gatwick Crown, November 6, 906, Foxtrot Echo, request taxi for departure. Six, Foxtrot Echo, runway 08, run, taxi fire, uniform, Julian, golf, Julian, 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 six, Julian, two, Julian, and Agent Julian, still one, take this time no getting out of here. Runway 08, run. Runway 08 right, taxi fire, uniform, Juliet, golf, you have to wait Juliet, for a, <coughs> a break Juliet, in the uh, radio chat. <coughs> or if you like me, you get told off. Virgin 1950, request QNH. Virgin 1950, London Gatwick, QNH 100. London Gatwick. Q and H one zero zero nine Virgin nineteen fifty. All right, so we're all set to go. So we can now take the brakes off and then, that one. And then add some power, and we can move. Virgin Let's get rid of ground services totally. You can do this within the cockpit or you can do it outside like before and just guide it around. Up to you really. I do tend to use a little bit of rudder and stuff. Cheeky. So you apply power, take power back off. 
off. Rudder I've got set on my switch on the top here. And that will just bring us back in. Or you could have rudder pedals on the floor if you really wanted to. London Gatwick, around November 593 Romeo Yet. Request taxi for departure. Big turns are turned to do. Turn properly. You don't have to be dead on the line, it's just um, if you go too far off, you will get my up. Juliet, Juliet, five, Juliet, six, Juliet, two, Juliet, and Juliet, one, hold short, runway, zero, eight, It's the first time we've been up this single rear airport. Yeah. Always just make sure that damn thing is on um, straight as well. and decrease the power as you need it. It should hang a right here, I think. Just slow it down a bit. It will pick up speed, I think. Most you're really going to use the yoke is coming out the airport and coming back in again. Most of the time it's on autopilot and you just sit back watching. Six Foxtrot Echo contact London Gatwick Tower which is probably about normal. Well, there's not much more than over 30 percent of my way can be this. You can if you want to a bit check on the other, it's all going straight up. You can actually do an outside window look and do what you want. That's what I like about this. But as you can see I've come way off of that. And it's going to the right, so I do need to calibrate my uh, yoke at some stage. I'll just keep pressing Z because that's my uh, centering stick, really. Where that is. If you're using foot pedals, you center it with your feet. These rudders are good for when you're going down a runway as well, you just keep, keep yourself straight while using the rudder. Rather than keep pulling left and right. Yeah. There you go. When you reverse thrust, that's just pushing this right down, and then flaps off so you'll have that fully extended at some stage. Oh, here's for a good landing and a good takeoff. So as we get up here, we'll be given instruction to contact the controller, and then they'll say whether we can take off or not. Short 
So we're actually coming up to the end of the runway, so we're not too far. And then what you can do is just not be coming in too quick on this. So I think I've knocked it more off. I'll let the plane coast. Just apply pressure when you think you need to. You don't have to have these guide arrows on the runway either if you know where you're going and to do it that way. And you want to be a bit more professional, then um, by all means do it without them. Also the wind can sometimes force the plane to the left or right as well, so it's not just all down to the uh, calibration. But I did, I forgot when I installed it to see it back up again. I do have another Virgin brake that slows us down a bit slower than just the parking brake, so we will just move closer to that. We can hit that, that will slow us down, so we can now... Virgin 1950, on taxiway, Juliet 6. How close are we to the So heading zero eight zero runway zero eight right cleared for takeoff. Virgin nineteen fifty. Okay, final checks before we take off. Make sure everything's as you want it. We look good. Set that back to the default position. Break off again and forward we go. Sometimes you get a line up and wait, sometimes you'll get straight up flight, so I tend to give it a good whack of power so I can get around and then we'll just roll straight into takeoff. Contact 
Flaps off. That's it. Oh, that pilot works. No. Yeah, we got it. Okay, we're away now. So we should be going to altitude. Um, we can change your view. Work the speed off. Think we have a good chance there. Contact controller. Bird 1950, altitude 2500, climbing to plane level 250. Bird 1950, London Heathrow, QNH 1010, radar contact. London Heathrow, QNH 1010, Bird 1950. Bird 1950, turn left heading 350. Turn left heading 350, Bird 1950. As you can see, this makes my life a lot easier. Use my panel. So we're shifting. And we have a concert route outside before we do anything. Those wipers turned off, that's right. Okay. And we can get all those off. Those will stay on. Oh, we're still climbing, I was making sure we weren't then. And you can just change that. If you're not happy with the speed, then, uh, oh, point. now we can wipe the speed back up now. Put that as high as you can. Get a bit. We go up to about two miles on this. 300 is okay, but you're flogging it. Quite a few. Right, we go back with speed. Let's back that up to 3,000 feet a minute. Or 3,000 feet. I'll be creeping up. Last little passenger view. So that's really it. We're on autopilot. We're heading to the direction they're asking us to head. It's all in front of me, so I know where I'm going. We have to keep an eye on the vertical speed, but we're going to stall. And you can flip around, do what you want, sort of in the within the lights. Sign until the captain has switched it off. We do recommend for your comfort and safety that you keep your seatbelt securely fastened throughout your flight. There is a call bell, reading light and fresh air vent in the panel just above your head. And we'd like to remind you that this is a strictly non-smoking flight and all toilets are fitted with smoke detectors. We invite you to sit back, relax and enjoy your flight with us. You don't get all that with the laminar, you don't get the immersion of the cabin crew in just a standard Lebanon.
complaints, so that's why everybody, everybody goes to the zebra. Because you get this extra, you get the noises and everything else. And you get passengers. You can't see the ground off the sides. The nice thing is also, with, because I've got a flight panel, if they're asking me to change um, direction up here, I can just do it while I'm still here, it's easy to do it. Just watch the panel do it. Yeah, it's and it's quite a wet day, get above this weather. It's a bit, a bit windy too. Thousand, seventeen thousand feet, and you can request all this stuff. We'll soon be descending actually, because you can keep it on there. Another good little zoom, where you can zoom out of it. Um, we're going to fly it properly. Yeah, we're going to fly it properly. The latest update they have done is on the system they'll give you a chance to um, so when you're ready to descend, so which is good because it helps helps you understand the distances when you start descending. Other thing I didn't do is I'm just gonna put it to cruise for now. It's a direct route, so um, we should be near our flight straight. And as you can see, the wind is blowing around, so we will just slightly off the a little bit, so we we'll just tweak it around. This is the handy bit of the note panel. So now the lights down on the panel are working, and it does work to the As you see, as we're climbing, obviously the speed is dropping off. But we're at climb. Passenger Escobar. Passenger Escobar. This is in regards to a special meal. Would you please identify yourself to a flight attendant? Passenger Escobar, please. Yeah. So you get little quirkies like that coming up, and I'll be as soon as I turn off the lights. The Thousand ago. Seatbelt. So I know um, they'll say something if they don't, I'll just make an announcement. Oh, I don't know. But we'll soon be ready to send anyway, so that'll be for later. Sometimes they announce it, sometimes they don't, so we will make our own announcement. Hello again from the flight deck, your captain speaking. We've just reached our cruise altitude and the seatbelt sign is now off. Feel free to move around the cabin, but we do ask if you are in your seat that you do keep your seatbelt loosely fastened in case we do experience any unexpected turbulence. Otherwise, invite you to sit back, relax and enjoy the flight.
so really we don't really get called into action until we can pause but we don't get called back into action until we start to land which won't be too long another reason we just short I'm sure I do actually forget to set the time on It'll be daytime. I tend to like to do nighttime flights as well, which are which are fun. So we're up in the clouds. Hopefully, um, it'll be a smooth landing. Sometimes they are They're a bit hit and miss with me at the minute. All depends on the um, plane as well. The thing with the Zebra mod, it has bugs. It does have a few bugs in there that go off from time to time. I just hit the brake once. Q and H one zero one zero. Oh, don't worry about. Barometric height, those. So we're just above the clouds, skimming the nothing. That's how you do this. You can also do this. There are other ones on there you can go through. Uh, not the right along. That's not the one either. Do those kind of things. Always nice for filming and stuff. Climb and maintain flight level zero nine zero. Climb and maintain flight level zero nine zero. Okay, going slightly off course again. So you have to keep an eye on this wind direction. These are all your clouds and where your thunderstorms are going to be. You're going to be As soon as we hit wells, it's normally pretty fast descent. Okay, I know we've done all this. Let's go back to our Five, Palmer Charlie, climb and maintain flight level zero. Keep track of where you are. So we're going to have rugby, Coventry. We'll start heading this way soon. Always a nice view, this one. Especially when you go over the mountains. Normally, when you descend, that'll take the 24,000 feet, it'll probably take straight to 11. 11, 7, 5, 2, 3, to say.
It runs really well, it's a high spec PC so it should run well. Just keeping an eye on this as well, so you have to make sure you're sort of roughly where you want to be. Climb Alpha Oscar, climb and maintain flight level 090. Climb and maintain flight level 090. Climb and maintain flight level 090. This one on the other screen, you'll be mapping to make sure you're helping out. You can also go back into flight plan, check the CPU, which one's your price. As you can see, you can, you can change it any time. If you decide that you want to go to Dublin, it's too long, too short, you can change. You can cancel your iPhone, and set up a new one, mid-air, and just go elsewhere. You can just see your own stuff on here. And nothing gets recorded on here. Listen to the chat. tend to do is do um, hop flights as well. I've done Stansted to Glasgow, Glasgow to Dublin, Dublin to France, France. Um, back to Stansted, I believe. Which are fun things to do. Helps with all the uh, landing practice you need. Landing's the, the thing you have to really learn this. And the other day, sometimes ATC can um, go wrong. It can get bugs in the system where uh, it's trying to send me to an airport that didn't exist. Asked for a diversion, it was sending me to a military base. Clouds are clearing a bit. Yeah, pretty straight flight, this is because we're going direct. Check out course. 
All you got to do is just keep coming right back, checking his course.
the flight deck, we are just commencing our descent. Looks like we'll be landing ahead of schedule and the weather conditions are looking good at our destination. We'll be touching down in less than 30 minutes, so do make your way back to your seats. Thanks for choosing to fly with us today and it's been a pleasure having you on board. Gentlemen, the captain has switched on the fastest seatbelt sign as we are now at the set. We would ask you to return to your seats and ensure that your seatbelts are securely fastened, your tray tables are in the upright and locked position, your arm rests down and window blinds fully open. Any bags you may have removed during the flight must now be restowed for landing, ensuring the main emergency exits and cabin aisle are kept completely clear of all baggage for landing. There should be no more further walking or standing in the cabin aisle and we will be landing shortly. Thank you. Okay, well we're coming into descent now. The weather's not looking great, so this is really interesting. over the sea. <coughs> Once I start picking up the uh, airport, I can uh, know exactly how far I've got to go, so that'd be good. Still yet to pick up the um, airport. I'm in a direct route now, so I should be ahead of the sun. We've got 7,000 feet.
she was one of them. Thousand to go. Let me go. I don't imagine we did 60, 70, probably 80 miles away. Where did we get to see all of that? See your own messages. Just tell us that we're going to come and see them. It confuses and noises. Done that before. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to let the game do the talking now from coming on, we'll just go by instruction of the um, ATC and um, so, uh, just enjoy um, the landing. Juliet, you're back. 
Seats for landing, please. Ladies and gentlemen, as you have to serve, we have approximately 20 minutes into arriving. The captain has now switched on the fastened seatbelt signs. Would you please return to your seats and make sure all your personal belongings are safely put away in the overhead locker or underneath the seats in front of you? Please ensure your seatbelt is now fastened, your table is folded away, your seat back is upright with the armrest down. If you are seated in an emergency exit row, all items must be placed in the overhead locker as the floor area around your seat must be completely clear for landing. This would include any shoes, blankets, pillows or magazines. All electronic devices must be switched off at this time and if you are using headsets, please remove them now. Once again, may we remind you that mobile phones must remain switched off until the aircraft has arrived at the terminal building and the fastened seatbelt signs switched off. Finally, please take a moment to remind yourself of your nearest exit.
as in a go. Twenty five hundred.
Tank break. 50, Tank 40, break. 30, 20, 10. Sorry, that wasn't the best landing in the Contact world, but it was tower. good enough. One, one, eight, decimal, six, zero, 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 yeah, and I can roll off the uh, runway, but for some reason the brakes stayed on. Uh, no failed systems, which is good. So eventually what we're going to do, we're going to have to, to get into... Our parking slot will actually fly to the outside, but we can do Because you don't need ATC anymore, we can get rid of that. We can get the ground handling ready. Which I'll help over there. And then what we're going to do, like that to about 30. And then we'll fly this in. Fly it in, drive it in. Externally. Bad flight, uneventful in one way, but it just gives you a good look at how x plane operates, how it works. If you're into flight sims, it's probably the better of the two, I'd say. I'll have a little go on flight sim later. I'm going to play with it a bit more at some point, but at the moment, I'd definitely say... Um, Explain this better. Wax them at speed of all. Close for a bit, it looks like we're going to pop up in here somewhere.
Looks like next to British Airways. I've not found that livery for this year. I thought I'd get the old uh, Virgin livery a good going over. I think next flight I'll do, I'll probably do something, I don't know, I might even do Australia. I fancy flying around Australia so I'm not going to say I've done a lot of Europe stuff, so Australia could be fun. As you can see, the quadrant and the yoke, I do find the calibre properly. It's a lot better, a lot less hassle, a lot less fraught. And I'm really hoping to get this video out. I've been trying for the last two days to get the video out. Um, but it's a learning process even with the recording stuff. They certainly come a long way with this version of it, so um, updating regular now, so I just a little better. And no crashing, which is good. We used to get really annoyed because we used to get a lot of crashing down there. We're away from the main airport, but. We can zoom in if you want to get a close look at and then you just request the ground services. If you had jetway, you'd do jetway first. And then we go back into here. We can just get everything turned off. And then from this point, you can either pick another route and fly off back either where you came or fly somewhere else uh, probably fly to Glasgow from here or something like that um, once all these are done it all oh, I still got those set ropes here. Okay. once that's all done um, what you can do you can come down here uh, if I go into here ooh, yep, let's go passion with you they're all nicely sitting there still. So the, you want to get rid of this lot because you're sick and tired of looking at them. You just hit that there and go back in and you've got an empty plane. Ready for your next one. And what I was going to show you was if I put passengers back in, do my welcome. Ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck, this is your captain speaking. On behalf of all the crew, welcome aboard this flight. We expect to be departing on schedule today, and weather on route is looking pretty smooth. Shortly, the cabin crew will be showing you a safety demonstration. This is for your safety and for those around you, so please give them your full attention. Once again, you're all very welcome on board. It'll take a few minutes, but they, they will actually go through the whole safety thing. So, it's just to show you that... You know, on the first go when you've got everybody on it doesn't do it but when you land and you let people off and you put people back on again it gives you the full kit and caboodle which is quite good it sometimes takes a little while for them to jump into action so I don't know if I've got to press anything in the I think I might have to activate the cockpit again if that one does it or these do it or these do it There you go. Instead of using a pause, we would appreciate it if you slowly make sure to switch that they will be taking a fantastic care of you on a short journey. You as well, man, before the, the departure, would appreciate your full attention as the safety is now over here. Thank you, please. So it should be another beep in a minute, and then uh, she'll go through. But she'll do it as a Ryanair flight because I don't have Virgin's sound bank. It's a shame they don't do them with deliveries. Okay. 
So while we're waiting for a young lady to come and do a demonstration, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, as you can see, my landings have improved. Still got a little bit more to go to uh, get them absolutely perfect. Um, once I do that, I'll be happy. But that was good. So that just basically showing you how the multi-pan and the Cytec stuff all works. Uh, like I said, the yoke was about 130 quid. The panel was 71 quid in the sale. Should be nearly 90 quid, 100 quid. Uh, you can build those panels up to all around it and near enough of an entire cockpit But it's going to cost you a good few hundred quid so She's not come on girl get Get chatting. She really want to go in the cockpit. I'd imagine What about if I push for attendance? She normally gives off a demonstration so I'm hoping she's going to do it soon She normally does it quite shortly after Matey Boy does his speech. Um, can't think of anything else I've got to press to make her do it. We'll give her a minute or two. Uh, please ask you for your full attention. Is this for your safety and for the safety of the passenger around you? Thank you very much. Are you going to do it? Welcome on board this Ryanair flight. May we have your attention while we point out some of the safety features on this Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Please remove headphones during this demonstration. There are eight emergency exits, each marked with a red exit sign. Floor path markings along the cabin aisle will illuminate in darkness and guide you to the nearest exit in an emergency. There are four main doors, two at the front of the cabin, one left and one right, and two at the rear of the cabin, one left and one right. There are four overwing exits in the center of the cabin, two left and two right. Please note the nearest exit to you, which may be behind you. To fasten your seatbelt, insert the metal end into the buckle. To secure, pull on the loose end of the strap. And to open, lift the buckle cover. In the event of a sudden loss of cabin pressure, individual oxygen masks will drop automatically from the panel above your head. If this happens, remain seated. Pull down firmly on the mask to start the flow of oxygen. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. Don't worry if the bag does not inflate. Oxygen is flowing. To secure the mask, pull one end of the strap. Adults traveling with young children, please attend to your own mask first. Your life jacket is stowed in a pocket beneath your seat or in the panel above your head. In the unlikely event of landing in water, remove the jacket from its packet and place it over your head. Bring the strap around your waist, clip at the front and secure as the crew are now demonstrating. To inflate the life jacket, pull down sharply on the red toggle. There is a mouse for further inflation or deflation and a light to attract attention. Do not inflate your life jacket inside the cabin as to do so will impede your exit. Further information may be found on the safety card which is displayed within the area you are seated. Your captain invites you to read this card carefully before departure. Please now ensure that your seat belt is securely fastened, tray table is in the upright and locked position, armrests down and window blinds open. We recommend for your comfort and safety that you keep your seatbelt fastened throughout the flight. There is a call bell, reading light and fresh air vent in the panel above your head. Portable electronic devices such as tablets and mobile phones in flight mode may be used throughout the flight. Please select flight mode now. Laptops must be stowed in cabin baggage under the seat in front of you or in the overhead locker for taxi, takeoff and landing. We would like to remind you that smoking is not permitted. Thank you for your attention. Please sit back, relax and enjoy your flight. And there we go, she'll go through the entire thing and you have to do one flight for that all to happen. So I'll just pause this for a moment. Uh, I knew I'd find the button somehow. And once again, yes, thank you for watching. Um, you probably not, you probably skipped and skimmed through a bit of it, which is 
pretty much what I'd normally do. Um, but I really do hope you enjoyed it. It's a proper real good look this time. I've had quite a bit of training on this now, so um, getting good to it. So enjoying it. Definitely, definitely a game worth getting. Um, Price-wise, it's a lot cheaper than Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I think you get more for it. Okay then, well, I'm going to leave it there. Um, probably a train will be the next video that I do. And I will say thank you and goodbye. I hope you enjoyed.